Charlie, you were so good in this movie, and I didn't know anything about Percy. How much did you know about him before? And then when you got the script, you were thinking, okay, I kind of know what I'm going to have to go through to make this movie. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I um, with you, I knew um, nothing about him. I'd never heard of Fawcett, um, which w was sort of criminal, being mm. British, and he's such an important part of British culture, but I actually think that very few people know about him. Um, so I'm really grateful that we had the opportunity to tell a story in this film. But yeah, I mean, like you said, it was, uh, it was immediately um, apparent from reading the script, the, re the requirements of this. And not really, the physical requirements didn't bother me at all. It was the, um, well actually that's not true. The, the, the aging in the film was something that, you know, that I was nervous about and required an enormous amount of thought to figure out how to do that um, uh, effectively. But it was more the emotional breadth of the film that I realized was going to be an, a really significant undertaking. And then when I got into deeply researching the character, just a sense of responsibility to the man. I, I fell in love with him um, and was so in awe of what he'd done in his life. Um, and I kind of got this really strong sense that he was watching me, that he was there on the journey with me and his typical stern way saying, okay, Let's see what you're going to do with this. And boy, did you ever. I mean, you went into the rainforest in Colombia, and oh my gosh. I mean, seriously, dude, um, I, I don't know if I could have been paid enough money to do what you did for this movie. <laughs> Honestly, I, I'm sure you would. Like, the, the idea of it is scary, and, you know, there were certainly people that have a, a heightened fear of creepy crawlies, of snakes and stuff. I don't share that. But equal to the challenges. It's such a magnificent environment. And I mean, it's, it's, it's just teeming with life and it's extraordinarily beautiful. So, you know, for, for the, the balance of the challenge that it presents, it also is a, just a, such a magnificent environment to get to experience. But you endured a beetle crawling into your brain. Well, no, thankfully I had an eardrum to stop the little bugger. Um, but yeah, he crawled in and got all the way into my um, ear canal and then couldn't, you know, it's, I guess, a fairly small, as we all do, ear canal and couldn't turn around. And so then he panicked and was obviously thrashing about trying to get back out. And then he couldn't, so he went to the next course of action, which was to eat his way through. So I woke up to him um, biting a pretty nasty little hole in my eardrum. But you know, as bad as that was for me, it probably wasn't that great for him either, because he ended up, um, you know, perishing in my eardrum, which was, you know, because the, the way to get something lodged in your ear like that is with a very powerful jet of water. So bless the little beetles. Heart. It didn't end well for him. Being Tom Holland's dad, you don't look old enough to be Tom Holland's dad, but working right? with that kid, seriously? There's yeah. Spider-Man here. <laughs> yeah, he was, uh, he's pretty spectacular. Super duper talented kid. There's no reason, there's, uh, there's no uh, accident that he is um, enjoying as much success as he is right now. I, I had a really great time with him and yeah, he's a, he's a phenomenal actor. Well, you're great too. You did such a wonderful job of this and I can't wait to see you in King Arthur. Guy Ritchie, oh my yeah, God. <laughs> very, very different film. Yeah. You know, this chalk and cheese. I mean, this is a very quiet, serious meditation of a film and, and that is just sort of balls to the wall, action and fun. So Good really stuff. lovely to have a, a, such a different double bill. Good stuff.